What's up internet? I'm George Edward, a photography YouTuber here on YouTube. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about computational photography. Big word, but a simple video, I promise. Adobe a little while ago put out an app called Project Indigo that uses pretty in-depth proprietary computational photography algorithm to get a more realistic look out of the images phones take. It's not as digitally sharp and saturated, but they have their own approach. So I thought we would talk through it. It's an app I've been using for a little while now, um, testing it out, seeing what it can do. So I'm gonna walk through some photos, talk about what it is and, and why you might wanna consider using it or why you might wanna avoid it. So at its core, computational photography kind of came about as a way of enhancing what you can do with really small sensors, like mainly phone sensors, image stacking, multiple exposures in order to get a better quality image or a more well-rounded image based off of an algorithm and a burst of photos and then maximizing it based off of the settings. So common examples of this, and this is stuff we see today just on like iPhone stock photos or whatever camera app you're using, but that's going to be like HDR mode, uh, portrait mode does it. So it's taking like different photos at different depths and letting you kind of scroll through and select the depth effect that you want. Night modes is one where we're stacking all of your different exposures in order to get as much light in one image as possible. But again, it's just doing a repetition and stack of photos and then putting them together in a way that the algorithm thinks makes sense. So this is important because mobile cameras are physically constrained. They're smaller. Uh, they're not as powerful as something like the 50R sensor that is literally the size of like a quarter of my phone. So it's just not gonna be able to get as much light in when you're using it. So essentially what we're doing is just giving our phone hardware more manpower, just pushing it past what it could potentially do on its own. But there are some drawbacks to this, and this is kind of what I wanted to talk through, right? Like what are we starting to introduce by allowing an algorithm to make decisions for us when it comes to our photos? Now, most of us are using a dedicated photography camera anyway, but for a lot of people, the phone is what they get started with and so what they start using. So finding that Goldilocks of, help versus creation or AI created is, is interesting. When you allow an algorithm to make some choices for you around lighting or color, et cetera, like how much of it is your own artistic intent and how much of it is the algorithms. And then there's also the, the subject of like hallucinations. Like what if the app introduces things or removes things automatically that you didn't want to have introduced or you didn't want to have removed? Now, right, we're foregoing some of the creative flexibility that we have and the app is starting to make those choices for us. And then lastly, biases. And so this one I'm not so worried about because I think on Project Indigo does a really good job with color, which we'll get to in a minute, but that's a bias that it is imposing. It is purposefully giving me a softer look and a more filmic look on the image outputs. And that's why someone like me was interested in it but it also is a con if that's not something you want to have introduced into your photos. It's not the same as using a raw image and really being able to dial in your color settings because it's doing a lot of that for you. So Project Indigo is an Adobe created app, kind of like a beta testing project, hence why it's called Project Indigo, uh, released on the iPhone app store for users like ourselves to start using. So one of the leads is actually from Google and I think kind of spearheaded their computational photography initiatives now is at Adobe and kind of doing the same thing. And, and so Adobe sees this as a way to experiment with different camera features, let users take it, beta test it, see if it's good, adopt a lot of feedback, and then re-push it back into their product and change the way that the product works. But the point is it's a photo app for people like you and I to use to test out and to see if we to see if we like it. So the goal was just to give users the ability to get the like the best looking image possible all the while have more of like a natural or filmic color palette. Again, there's no HDR saturation. Everything in the colors on the output of these images is a bit more toned down and also sometimes a bit more realistic, a bit sometimes unrealistic, but we'll get to that. The app also has loads of like native controls built into it. So you can start to control like your, your ISO, your shutter, your temp, tint. Uh, and then you could even control the amount of photos it's taking when you're taking like a burst of photos. And so that way you're introducing as much into one single composite image as, as you would like. So all that said, right, we've talked about like what this thing is aimed at doing and why it could be potentially helpful to use. But I think what's the most helpful is what does it actually look like? Like what is the end product of some of these photos look like? So I downloaded this app, I think like a little before I left for Switzerland. So somewhere back in July, and I've been using it for a little over three months to get us to today. What I wanted to do is just walk through some of the photos that I've taken over the time I've been using this app, what it looks like, what the experience is like, and why you might want to consider using it. And the main drawback that I see in no particular order, here's some photos that I've taken when I was actually out in California recently. 
So I didn't have a lot of time to actually go out and take photos. And I feel like that's where this app helps me the most is like, I don't necessarily have the time to bring my full camera with me or I'm on a run and I see something that looks particularly interesting. I feel like this app is a good app to use to get me to like a close enough file that I might actually want to use in some way, shape or form. It's work withable as opposed to just like a standard iPhone photo. But this was on a run, a really gorgeous sunset. So just to compare like what iPhone's images look like, you would see that the darks are really like flattened and muted. You can't really see any of them. Whereas like this is pulling out a lot of the detail out of the dark tones in the grass. It's also made adding a lot more blue to the image, but I do think that these are very similarly timed photos and they look very, very different. So as we go through some of these sunsets, you can see the main, the major kind of differences. Like these are all happening around the same time, but you're getting two very different results because the iPhone natively wants to make everything look as good as possible. Whereas this, I think is having a little bit more of a selective um, decision-making process take place where it's trying to make it look like the best sunset as possible. What I wanted to compare here is actually how it renders like night scenes, but this was like a little further past in sunset. So this was pretty dark from my eyes here. But when we look at these images, like you can see this tree, I think looks pretty good. Like it looks like if I edited these colors, like I like the detail in this photo. I like the composition. It's a good setup. Like I could use this photo of this tree. Like I think it looks really good. The lighting is very soft and pleasant. When we actually get back into it, that's where you're getting some of like the digital processing to help you out. The sky becomes a lot brighter in the upper left-hand corner. The orange tones kind of come out into the image uh, on the lower end of the horizon. And I think you're actually getting like a relatively solid looking photo uh, out of this. So that was pretty cool to see. This one's really interesting when we compare because I think the iPhone image in some way, shape or form is 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 better. Like the iPhone image that I'm getting out of this. So the iPhone image, because I think it's just gonna be naturally brighter, uh, seemingly, like it's not gonna do any muting, which the which Project Ingo is. I think the iPhone image comes out a little bit better because uh, you're getting all of the pops of the highlights. But again, the blues in Project Indigo on this are just like way better when we're looking at this lake and, and sky uh, composition here. Here's my issue though. So this image is a little bit further back and this is where we'll probably, this is the main con and this is where you'd have to find the right use case for this type of app. Cause everything I've shown so far has just been a landscape. So we haven't actually had people involved. And I think that might be where you start to question what it is this is doing. Now, granted, it's just slap, slapping together instances of the same image and doing its best with it. It's not necessarily like using AI to generate too much, but I'm curious if it does a little bit because in this image here, I, I love it. Like I think the colors on this are beautiful. And I just think this is such a pretty image and the two guys fishing are just in the perfect spot on the frame. It looks great. My problem is when you zoom in on them, they look like they're out of like a video game from like the 90s, like very like cubed, <laughs> dimensionless, very flattened and it's probably because they were moving in like the multiple iterations of the photo that it took but that's where i start to question like what it is that this is doing and how much of this is like photography that i'd be comfortable really running with because now it feels like we're starting to teeter into a different category of photography altogether that's one of my main kind of concerns and constraints when using this is when it comes to people and i didn't notice it until i took this image and then that's what prompted me to actually kind of dive a little bit deeper and, and make this video so it's interesting right it's like what are the pros and what are the cons what's acceptable and what's unacceptable and at what point are we foregoing some of like naturally created art to algorithm and ai created art and what's the line of acceptability and I don't know I don't have the answer to that but where I'll end this is just one of my favorite photos which is I think highly due to the fact that Project Indigo did such a good job with the colors here so here's the iPhone photo just so you can see it just so I could compare but then I took this one a little bit more uh, intentionally composed with Project Indigo and this is in my phone background since I since I went to Switzerland I think this looks this looks great I think this without me having the ability to set up my tripod and take this image, which I wanted to, but we we're in a time crunch to get home. I just used my phone to quickly get this because I knew it was a photo I at least wanted to have, but it's okay that I don't have like the bona fide thing on my 50R. And I think this looks very close to how I would have edited it, but the colors and the way they're overlapping with each other, the green is very sharp, the blue is very sharp, and the orange light on the actual uh, bathroom there is is super bright and what you would expect out of like a nighttime photo which this was in night mode so i think it does a really good job of like organizing all the information it has in front of it in a very 
natural looking way, but there's no people in it. And I think that's the biggest caveat, but I wanted to put it on your radar. You know, these things are all tools that you have available to you that you could use at any point in time. And I think this one gives you a decent baseline. One of the things I haven't done though, is compare this to iPhone raw photos. I have to imagine iPhone raw photo might stand up a little bit more to uh, a computational app like this, but it doesn't necessarily have the quickness as something like this. This is still a JPEG, so it's still a smaller file, but you're still getting a lot of light flexibility out of it. So I think for something like a phone, it could make a lot of sense. So a relatively niche video for you guys this time. If you are in the market for a new phone app, maybe it's of interest to you. Thought I'd make this video because I found it particularly interesting. I feel like in every part of our lives these days, you can't really escape AI the powers that it brings, the cons that it introduces. So even in photography, these are questions that we have to ask ourselves. So I thought I'd make this video. So if you're interested in what this app is, how it might change your photography, or how it might be another tool to add to your toolkit, I thought we'd talk about it. So as always, if you made it this far, I appreciate it more than you know. If you liked it, like it, subscribe if you want to, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.